Humans, we have become the dominant species on planet Earth with our cultural, social, and technological advancements. We have become a complex species with emotions that revolve around the questions of life. One being where do we come from and what future can we expect as the human race. History is one of the key tools we can use to uncover any secrets or surprises that may lay in our near futures. That's the question we've been asking ourselves for a very long time. Where did we come from? How did we get here? What made us the people we are today? Well, I'm gonna go into that with exploring the theory of evolution. And today here at Palomar College, I am using this anthropology classroom, thanks to Jeff McKendricks, who has given me the opportunity to examine all these skulls right here. We're gonna go through and talk about their history and talk about evolution as they progress through time to what we end up having back here, Homo sapiens. And although some of these lines split up into different species, we're gonna talk about their similarities and then we're gonna go and dive into one of these species in particular, which I feel that makes us human truly, and where the human line began, which is the Homo genus. Fifty-five million years ago, the primate line began. From here, we continue off to a prosimian, this little guy right here, and then we move on to a lemur. And you can see the changes of sizes as they go through evolution. You can see how they began getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And this is all a part of natural selection and just adaption to their environment. Then, coming up later on, we have the separation of New World and Old World monkeys. This right here is a baboon. And as you can tell, this is the Old World and you can see that there's similarities between this Pata monkey and this baboon since they are both from the same area. Over here we have New World monkeys which you can see begin to diverge and they have a whole different look to them. This is a holler monkey and you can see the jaw starts changing dramatically here. So this is just one of those changes in evolution with separating species. Now, as we take a look at these bigger skulls here, 11 million years ago, we split up from the orangutans. They share a DNA of 96.4 common to ours. Eight million years ago, we have the gorillas. Their DNA compared to ours is similar to 97.7, average around there, of DNA. And over here, we have our distant cousins, the chimp. The chimp shares 98.4 DNA with us, which is why they are the closest thing to us. And over here, we have what could be our ancestor right here, Proconsul. And you can see the similarities between the chimp and Proconsul right here. Does that give you a clue? Anthropus over here dates back to around seven million years ago. Then we have our famous Lucy over here, who we have one of the most complete set of body skulls from head to toe. She comes from around 3.2 million years ago. And she, if you look at her, has a lot of similarities to a chimpanzee. And you can see that Lucy most likely looked like a chimp yet she was walking upright on two feet. Looking at the forum magnum, you'll notice that it's down here 
and that is what tells you that she was upright and walking along with the rest of her body her hips makes a big difference and you see a pattern in the hips where their hips are a lot shorter compared to a monkey who walks on all four who has long hips that are made for that we have a s spine just like lucy over here while the chimpanzee has an arch spine since they're on their four after Australopithecus afarensis, you can see the variation in different hominins here. They all coincided and lived around each other around at different times, so that tells you that maybe they didn't exactly go through evolution all in one path and they were just going through different changes, which we can name different hominids because of their dramatic different changes. Like this over here would be Australopithecus africanus. And you can see there's a little from Lucy over here. And the size is getting bigger, their teeth will begin getting a little smaller, their brain starts getting a little bit bigger. And then over here, we have what could have began the Homo genus. This is Homo habilis. Homo habilis was a tool maker. They found tools next to this species showing that these people were a little smarter. And you can see that their brains were developing and getting bigger you're losing the gap here because there's more brain space. You can see the sagittal crest on Paranthropus boisei. It pulls out, this gives them some space to have muscles for their large jaws, which they use to eat through heavy vegetation, compared to Havilus having to use their little teeth and having to create tools to help them chomp down through meat and bone marrow. Erectus, who might have been living alongside Pavilus, is the next step. Their brains, as you can see, is a lot bigger. From 1.8 million years ago, Erectus roamed the lands and they were the first hominids that began to expand out of Africa and go around the world. Then, you have the Neanderthal, Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, and Homo sapiens sapiens, which would be us. And you can see the big changes coming from here to here. And you might even see some similarities in the Neanderthalensis with the Boise eye. So you can see there could have been some breeding in between and some adaptions, just all sorts of mixes going on between every one of these species. But we come back to the debate here with Homo habilis, who is the beginning of the Homo genus. Some people say that he should not start the Homo genus, that he is too ape-like and too monkey-like. But for many reasons, I believe he is the beginning of the Homo genus. And we're going to explore into that right now.